conference, Our Ocean, was held in the Pacific region, Palau, which ended last week. At the closing of the conference, 410 commitments were made by a number of countries valued at just over 16 billion US dollars. Aotearoa committed 3.4 million US dollars to a partnership with the Pacific Islands Forum Fisheries Agency and 3 million US dollars towards climate change assessment. So joining us now to have Dalanoa about this funding is Foreign Affairs Associate Minister and of course Pacific People's Minister Alpito William Seo, uh, who actually attended the conference on behalf of Aotearoa. Then I say Maloni Soifuan, welcome to the show. Maloni Soifuan, as they say in Ali, uh, in Palau, Ali. Oh, beautiful. Uh, of course, yes, you have just sort of arrived literally back into the country, Minister, and of course, your overall experience attending the Our Ocean Conference, uh, of course, delivering that climate change action messages on behalf of New Zealand. Your overall uh, response to it, how was it for you? Oh, it was wonderful um, to travel again. The last time I travelled was uh, 11th of March 2020, just mm. before we went into lockdown. Um, and although I've been in touch with many of my ministerial colleagues across the region on virtual platforms, on Zoom meetings, it's not the same as coming face to face and having that human contact, looking at them in the eye, you know, listening to the words that they were saying and making sure there was no uh, mistranslation or loss in translation. <laughs> um, so it was just really, really fantastic. Obviously, under the context of uh, COVID-19, lots of testing uh, between borders, between here, Australia and Palau. Um, we did have colleagues who were uh, tested positive mm. uh, with COVID in Palau. A couple of them are still back there because they couldn't leave until they've completed isolation. So felt really, really blessed and Mm. felt it was a wonderful opportunity for the Pacific whanau to come together and to share our lessons and experiences with um, government representative, business representative, civil societies who are not necessarily always in our region. So Mm. we had that opportunity to talk to the Americans, to talk to the Europeans, uh, representatives from Asia um, who were here for the first time in our region, Mm. and just to share with them and to showcase that we are living and breathing climate change, that, you know, we're not reading the reports, we're actually experiencing it day to day. Mm -hmm. And so it was a wonderful experience. That's great. And you talk about, of course, hearing certain different representatives. Was there any maybe Minister uh, Pacific delegates or youth delegates that you found spoke and sort of just, you know, made a bit of an impact while you were there? Well, look, I think it was our young people um, from the the, the PIF Secretariat and the Office of the Pacific Ocean Commission had organised, mm. um, and also the local uh, youth from high schools there. You know, they shared their story through song, through dance, Mm -hmm. through poetry. And there were other youth also from outside of our region who were obviously there. But I felt they were able to convey through their arts um, things that politicians also struggle to get through because they're at a different level. Um, Mm -hmm. Music and poetry touches the spirit. And so they had a a great impact, I think, um, Mia Kami, who uh, father is Tongan, um, they live in Fiji. She sang beautifully at the opening of 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 the conference, but also during our fifth secretariat uh, side event. And I I think everybody felt moved by it. But I don't want to take away also the Palawan community, the young people who performed for us and conducted that cultural welcome. Mm. You know, you I think. Everybody felt something, felt something, a connection to the spirit of the Pacific that they went away moved. And I am I believe they went away with a sense of urgency, mm. um, of reality, that we were talking. Um, one of Mia's songs was about we're going to continue fighting on. Um, uh, the words also of another song was about maintaining our mana and dignity that the ocean is part of who we are. I mean, I use the word kaitiakitanga from our indigenous people here because 
I think that was important for us to support the narrative of the Pacific. And our narrative is that the ocean is an integral part of who we are. New Zealand is, looks to the ocean as our home, as our heart. Mm. You know, we look to the ocean as part of our genealogy. And those messages were powerfully conveyed in song, in poetry, and obviously was underpinned by the science by the scientists who were there, and of course, um, political rhetorics such as ours made it a bit fun. <laughs> <laughs> I like, Minister, obviously, you know, uh, you being the person who's representing Aotearoa, the money that we've committed, as we've said, 3.4 million to that partnership with Pacific Islands Foreign Fisheries Agency, also another US 3 million towards climate change. I mean, the money that we're investing, what are you hoping will actually? Uh, strengthen and support uh, this cause. Yeah, I, I'm really pleased, and I want to acknowledge our officials uh, at Infact mm. and across the board at our all of government approach because they obviously have been negotiating their way through um, in identifying where we can make the big difference. Mm. I mean, we're a small contributor when you listen to the contributions and commitments made by some of the big nations you know they're talking hundreds of millions of dollars um, we're a small nation here but i think um people who came up to me after the commitment acknowledge that we have um, intimate knowledge of what's important in the pacific so you know the first announcement i made around supporting the partnership of the University of South Pacific. A lot of people didn't know there was a University of South Pacific mm. you know, uh, and wow. the University of Canterbury. Um, you know, that, that New Zealand dollar was about $4 million. That commitment was about um, looking at com- looking at recognising that there was a knowledge gap. Mm. And if you go on www.pacificprotect.com, I launched it and that's gone on live. And it's it's quite a unique first time ever um, approach where the academics are gathering that information, evidence based, as well as the authoritative data mm. that will help us make good quality decisions about how do we better conserve the ocean and how do we make sure that our development projects are sustainable long term. Yeah. And of course, the biggie, uh, which was part of our Pacific narrative, is that we have to acknowledge our traditional knowledge, indigenous knowledge, what I term as cultural intelligence, Mm. that science is important, but equally important is our cultural intelligence from our vast experience of thousands of years of being a resilient people, dealing with storms and and things of that nature. And and the other money um, um, that went as part of our partnership with the Foreign Fisheries Agency. Mm. FFA is so indispensable, a part of this region, and Dr. Manu Tupo Rosen has been a fantastic uh, Director General of that, and it was quite interesting because it was that we were there, uh, made the commitment, and the context of that, of course, is the Foreign Fisheries Agency of the Pacific Forum Islands. Um, we're, we're trying to renew the US Tuna Treaty Mm. Uh, are unique and the only one in this region. And of course, we're representing Tokelau because they receive about 80% of their um, non-aid funding from fishing licenses. And that money is going to support, our commitment to the FFA is going to support um, the Pacific being able to sell their tuna to greater markets uh, outside of our region, such as the European Union. Mm. We're going to be able to help them make better investment decisions. And the third thing is being able to grow Pacific leadership in the fisheries, because I was hearing those voices from uh, civil societies, from women organization, that they, sometimes we forget, (laughs) but they, women, play such an integral part in the decision-making, in the management of money in the fisheries, particularly in coastal regions that rely so much on 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 our ocean on our fishing for jobs livelihoods but you know from us also when we look to the ocean there's a spiritual connection mm. and i think that message went across in our commitments uh while small comparatively to some of the other countries were probably of greatest value and showed also 
that we are well connected into the region and we're supporting Pacific leadership because this is what the Pacific leadership were asking for. Yeah, that's beautiful. I love hearing, of course, obviously highlighting the women in that space too. Uh, Minister, of course, do you think from this conference that there actually was like a global urgency in regards to climate change? My second part to that question, though, is, of course, you can see that even Tuvalu's uh, foreign minister, Simon Goffey, recently announced, you know, they're withdrawing its support because they wanted to explore deep sea mining. So your thoughts on that? Look, I mean, every country is a sovereign country around here, but our commitment and New Zealand is a strong advocate of the Sustainable Development Goal 14, mm. which talks about life below water. Yeah. And, and we believe, New Zealand's perspective is that we believe that um, you need robust data, you need science, you need strong evidence before we can make decisions you know, of digging around uh, underneath our our ocean, which we talk in the Pacific. The narrative is about a blue Pacific continent. Um, and obviously, the way that I approach things at the conference was to say, look, we don't want um, the the desire for economic development to develop, uh, to divide us in this regard. I mean, my message to the very powerful countries was, if somebody's drowning. Don't ask them what they need. Mm. Don't ask them what design of a life raft would they prefer. Just help. Just throw the lifeline out there. Mm. And and that was important because oftentimes we forget that the Pacific, after enduring a pandemic, um, where we've seen how it affected their tourism dollars, and many of the small Pacific islands are so dependent on that tourism dollars, that at the moment, my approach to the Americans, to the, the British, to the European Union is understand the Pacific region, be a lot more pro-Pacific mm. because these islands are in need of support and help. And of course, I, I, th I think I was strongly supported by our cousins across the ditch, Australia, who's become quite an indispensable uh, development partner for us. But I think, you know, every country makes their own decision. But I think for our region, we are so reliant on the ocean, we're calling it ourselves as the blue Pacific continent, <laughs> that we do need to better understand how we can support one another. And we can't allow our individual aspirations and needs to divide us. We've got to find a more positive narrative to bring people together. Because at the end of the day, um, we have to stand united because as John Kerry said, you know, 20 of the most powerful and wealthiest nations are responsible for 80% of the global emissions that, that is, is, is destroying things at the moment. And it was the Pacific who led the charge on the 1.5 degree goal. It's the Pacific that's leading the charge again on preserving our maritime zone, uh, zones mm. um, in yeah. light of, um, of induced climate sea level rise. And so I think, you know, we've got to do a lot more of that and New Zealand will play its part in championing the voices of the Pacific, amplifying that voice, but also championing the leadership that comes from the yeah. Pacific. Because I, I notice how challenging it is for many of the wealthy representatives to really appreciate, understand what's happening in the Pacific. And it was only when they arrived on Palau, they got a better appreciation how challenging it was to travel to this part of the region, right. how small right. the islands are, you know, how the rising seawater levels are really eroding our coastal lines, mm. um, and how warming the oceans are destroying the coral reefs and therefore impacting on marine life and how plastics play such a destructive part in marine pollution. I mean, I think it was 97% of the fish species found uh, in a report found that 97% uh, of the fish species in Fiji, Samoa um, and Rapa Nui um, were eating 30% more plastic waste. And then, you know, you talk about the IUU fishing, the, the illegal, unregulated, unreported fishing. The threat to the Pacific is no longer the dark vessels. It's vessels who are already licensed. Mm. Those are 
culprits. And if I using first seen fishing and discard those nets, those nets are out in the high seas going backward and forward, capturing um, fish and continuing to um, just continuing to, to do harm and damage to marine life throughout. Nice. Uh, Minister, I'm so sorry we have to wrap up because of time, but I appreciate it because we usually ask for fun messages, but you really did amplify, of course, the call out for our people and what we need to do. Uh, but glad you are safely back and we appreciate your time this morning. Good to be here. <laughs> Thank you very much for this opportunity. Kia kaha, everybody. Stay safe. No worries.